Welcome, I'll be reacting to Blake's Seven, Season 3, Episode 4. This is a commentary, it is not a market substitute. Please support the original currently on Brickbox, and no spoilers in the comments. Oh, a game! Also, Dana, I love that color on you. Callie, great outfit too. So while on a penal colony planet, on his third turn, he must pay a 10,000 credit fine and leave the colony. I love it. So it's like future Monopoly. I didn't consider you worth a battle fleet. <gasps> Even if I got past it, where could I go? I need this game. Wait, you can have a hotel in Space City? So this is futuristic Monopoly. Also totally unrelated, but Tarrant, that belt is so fetch. See, isn't that cool? I did not comment on Avon's outfit because I was like, eh, it's a little basic. And then I saw his pants and I'm like, never mind. Auron is still the reference point according to this. What about the game? Orak has his priorities straight. A full manual check on all systems, weapons, force wall, everything. But what about the game? What is the possibility of a directional control fault arising on the Liberator without Zen knowing about it? The chances are that had the game continued as it should have done, I would have won control of the galaxy on a probability of 10,450 to 1. Orak, it was only a game. Orak, I love you. And I can offer a high status prediction that it will continue to behave normally. Confirmed. Zen didn't sound okay. He was like, confirmed. Infallibility depends upon your point of view. How about testing his infallibility in the recycling machine? <gasps> Newton's first law states that a moving body will we'll continue keep to moving, move yeah. in a straight line. Unless it is acted upon by an outside force. Mm -hmm. Someone or something has got a traction beam on us. There is no known power in the universe that can operate a traction beam over that distance. No known power. Anyway, Tarrant, this is not the doing of my people. For one thing, they're not hostile, and for another, they haven't developed the traction beam. Do they all have your telepathic powers, Cal? I don't think it's them. However, we have seen telepaths working together and telekinesis happens, so it is possible. Dana has a point here, but I don't think it's her people. Why not turn the ship round and use the main drive to slow down our acceleration? It'll just drain the batteries. We will do nothing to counter the force acting upon the Liberator. We then plot the Liberator's course on the main battle computer flight predictor to see exactly how she is behaving. And be ready. He's right. You'd just waste energy if he fought it. But there's nothing there. Zen, use long range intensifier. Three guesses. Black hole? If you need them. A black hole. Well, that's not good. Our remains will spread out over the entire surface, adding the thickness of a few atoms to its diameter. Thanks, Avon. Considering the proximity of that fascinating black hole, oh, no. the ship was <laughs> and is behaving normally. All right. All right. <laughs> what is so fascinating about this particular black hole? It's a portal. The absence of X-rays highlighted a gap in my knowledge of the universe which cannot be tolerated. <gasps> oh, Orak, is this your fault? that the occupants of this spacecraft have a lamentable lack of interest in the more fascinating aspects of the universe. I love it. Uh, you must excuse me, I have many observations to make. I kind of feel for Orak here, because they've been ignoring him lately, and just kind of randomly turning him off whenever they feel like it. This is his way of going, well, I really want to look at this. They're going to say no, so I'm just going to go. In his defense as well, Black holes are fascinating. I mean, there's this new theory as well that like water and black holes interact in a really interesting way. I'm upset with Orak, but also I get it. I really do. He's basically behaving like a Starfleet officer in that they're always running off to look at these dangerous anomalies because it's like, ooh, what's that? You know, and then of course the ship is in mortal peril as a result. The Liberator crew are more like regular people, so they'll see a black hole and go, okay, let's go the other way and not go near that. I just love the juxtaposition of those two philosophies on the same ship. Now in excess of design limitations. Hey, we noticed. Oof. 
Zen, increase the light. Zen? Delay regretted. All commands now require prior verification. By what? By me. It has been necessary for me to assume control of the ship. All right. Excuse me. I have many observations to make. Wow. You came here. I have waited for the time uh -huh. to get to the house of the So alone. Yes, so we should be together. Then where the hell are we now? Wherever it is, we are not in space. Oh? Uh-oh. That's nothing. There are no stars out there, Tarrant. There is nothing. We have fallen through the black hole into the so-called negative universe of antimatter. Ah! Where time and energy no longer exist. Very Star Trek. Two blasts at 10% power. Is it being deflected so back? Shooting back? You're shooting at yourselves? Yeah. Which is making my observations extremely difficult. Someone who has a talent for opening locked doors. And has demonstrated a grasp of the problems involved. Ha 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 I use my delicate, okay. skillful boot. There's ground. Oh my goodness! Is this Lathan's palace or something? They said other ships had gone missing. Run! 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 <sighs> Thank you, Callie. Designed to tear things apart. Oh, that's what Spacecraft, happened to the other ship. For example. Relax. Please tell me there was atmosphere there and they didn't know. Oh. <laughs> All the naturally occurring minerals are present, with the exception of Herculaneum. I mean, that's a city near Pompeii, right? I didn't think it was a mineral. The Liberator's outer skin is fabricated from it. Oh no! It is a contributing factor to this ship's invincibility. Hello Welcome there. Welcome to Crandor, my friends. And all will be made clear. No. No one moves. Any explaining will be done here. Ah. Oh. It's interesting to see people's reactions here. Tarrant tends to be overconfident and very brash. Like, he jumped right in and was like, we're not going anywhere. You're explaining it right now. Avon, notice, was just standing back and observing what was going on until he had more data to work with. It's always the quiet ones you have to watch for. There's some kind of a dampening field. You'll start thinking about those legends, Callie, because one of those nursery rhymes might save you. And in his rage, he killed another god. The five remaining gods were so angry, they built a chariot for him. So they built a spaceship and sent him here. It has only to sense one lie and it will boil your brains in your skull. Where is Orak? What is the color of his hair? He hasn't got any. A bald dwarf shouldn't be too hard. And the Lord Than will be supreme emperor. Sit down. There is no reason why we should not start. Oh no, a math test? This truly is torture. Why not use calculators or computers? We couldn't do that. What's that? A finger? A finger. And as you can see, it is better designed for pressing buttons than holding writing implements. So <laughs> This is designed for buttons, not writing implements. You had a family on some of them. A wife, two children. Very soon your ship will be no more than a pile of scrap metal. No. No. Oh, we haven't seen this in a while. Ye old ship defense. 
The one only Blake could get past. When it's complete, it will be powerful enough to move planets and stars. Oh, I see. So he's going to bring the galaxy to him. The Liberator? Was it Orak that killed them? I don't know. He doesn't know, because he's new. Putting the gravity generator into reverse would collapse the floor beneath the Liberator and allow her to fall out into free space. Switch off the energy isolators, then I can find out for myself. Yeah, but be sure you have something to aim at first. But if you could tell them my family, they were always in my thoughts. We'll tell them both. Oh, he's going to see if he can reverse things, right? Go, Graf! No! You mustn't see me! Oh. What's interesting is it's kind of how they described Orak. Oh no. Come on, hurry! Reverse it! I feel like Callie left Thon alive. Thank you, Graf. Information. Detectors indicate that a small spacecraft has left object centered on main screen and is flying on a reciprocal course. That must be the Thon. I think she had compassion on him in the end. Sarana? We promised to take a message there, didn't we? I suppose we owe Groff that much. Uh, yeah, you owe him a lot. Oh, I don't know. He did have one redeeming feature. <laughs> he didn't like computers. Course for Zarada laid in. Thank you, Zen. So he likes some computers. Just <laughs> he and Orak clash. Out of all the Blake's seven episodes so far, this one felt the most Star Trek, I would say. And I mean original series Trek. Unknown species force pulls the ship into a mysterious planet. The crew is captured. They have to reverse the polarity to destroy it. And then all is revealed to be a kind of bald, ancient, childlike being. I mean, we've seen this before. What is it? The Carbamite maneuver? And it's very lucky that it was Callie that Thawne was so interested in because she has compassion. She likes to fight evil, but also... At the end there, she felt more pity. Figured, you know what? It was just a story. He deserves a chance to live. I don't know. It was an interesting choice there to kind of cut that scene and let us extrapolate what it might have been. I also really like the twist on the sci-fi staple of alien species forces you to work for them. Because it's usually mining and the crew ends up deep in the or pits or whatever. So to have it be, oh no, you have to sit here and do math problems was quite the twist. I liked that part. Also, it's my worst nightmare. I would rather do the mining. The costuming was really good this episode. Loved Dana's dress. I feel like Tarrant is getting more confident, but also he does not like Avon. We're getting a little bit of tension there. They have very different leadership styles. And it's not entirely clear who's really in charge. I mean, I think Avon is. But I think Tarrant thinks he should be. It's kind of like that scene from Firefly where Mal is like, Do you want to run this ship? And Jane's like, Yes. I'm getting a very Mal and Jane relationship between these two. Overall, I thought it was a really fun episode.